Hi there, this is Pedro from Simulation Curriculum. Today I'd like to give you a brief overview of how our lesson plans are organized in the layered earth. Okay, let's get started. First we'll go to Student Lessons, which is where all of the units available in the layered earth are located. And there are seven units in the layered earth geology, and each unit contains several lesson plans. I'm just going to click on Unit E, Earthquakes. And then I'm going to go straight into one of the lesson plans. In this case, E1, Earthquakes and Faults. This is one of our shortest lesson plans, but will give you a good idea of all the various components that make up a lesson. At the top of the screen, we have a guiding question, which states, what is an earthquake? The purpose of the guiding question is to provide context for the lesson. Students should be able to answer the guiding question at the end of the lesson. Below the guiding question, we have the key concepts. Key concepts outline the main ideas and skills students will learn. In this case, we have two. Earthquakes are caused by the interaction of Earth's plates and the sudden release of stored energy in the form of movement along a fault produces an earthquake. Underneath the key concepts, we have the lesson sections or parts. The lesson sections previews the main topics in a lesson. In this case, we can see there are three parts to this lesson. Let's look at this lesson in more detail by clicking on E1-1, Some Great Beast. Now, the first thing you notice is that the main window on the right-hand side has changed. The view of the Earth always changes to show something related to what we are learning about. In this case, it took us to England, to the location where author Charles Dickens experienced an earthquake while sleeping there in 1863. And we get a very human account of an earthquake before we get into the science. Dickens describes an earthquake by saying, I was awakened by a violent swaying of my bedstead from side to side, as if some great beast was trying to rise. Of course, back then, we didn't really know what caused earthquakes, and this was one of the ways that we could explain what an earthquake was. Of course, science has come a long way since then, and this is what we'll be looking at in this unit. On the left-hand side, we have the text for the lesson. You will notice that the word earthquake is highlighted in green and bolded. If you place your cursor over this word, you will see a rollover definition. All words that are bolded have rollover definitions associated with them. To the right of the text, we have an image of the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. All of our images and simulations are interactive, and if you click on the image, you can enlarge it. In this case, we can see a train tipped on its side. At the bottom of the page, we can see a link that will take us to the next part of the lesson. Let's click on that. Here, we have an example of a learning activity. Each lesson includes one or more learning activities. A learning activity is an interactive activity in which students explore a concept by making use of information that is presented to them on the 3D Earth in the main window. In this activity, we'll be looking at the correlation between plate tectonics and earthquakes to see if there is a connection. The click here is highlighted. If you click on that, it will show you the plate tectonic boundaries. If you go to the main window, you can click and rotate the earth and zoom in to show all of the plate boundaries. The next click here will also plot a database of historical earthquakes. And now students can quite clearly see that indeed, there does appear to be a correlation between plate tectonic boundaries and the location of earthquakes. Now, they might notice that in certain locations, there seems to be earthquakes even though it's not along a plate boundary. And that's okay. We'll be looking at other uh, phenomena that can also cause earthquakes outside of plate tectonic boundaries. You will also notice that we actually draw earthquakes at depth. And this allows you to see which plate is actually being subducted. In this case, we can see the Nazca plate 
is being subducted underneath the South American plate. You will notice that earthquakes are plotted in different colors. Shallow focus earthquakes are plotted in red. Intermediate focus earthquakes are plotted in yellow. And deep focus earthquakes are plotted in green. As students click around the various earthquakes, they might notice that you don't get earthquakes that are deeper than about 700 kilometers. And there's a good reason for that. It just happens that the plate melts and at that depth, you no longer have earthquakes. We also have a series of questions relating to this activity and at the bottom, we have a view answers button. In all our activities, we offer the student the ability to view the answers. This serves to reinforce the main concepts and allows students to undergo self-assessment. On the right-hand side of the activity, we have a Did You Know? This serves to give further information and capture the student's interest. Lessons can have a variety of these links, including history, travel, math, technology, and word links, to name a few. Let's go to the next section. The main window is now showing us the San Andreas Fault. And in this section, we are trying to determine what causes an earthquake in the first place. Most often, an earthquake occurs when parts of the Earth's crust move past one another at a fault. And we can zoom on the San Andreas Fault and see this ourselves. We also have another interactive component in the form of a flash interactive. And we have quite a number of these throughout the lessons. Here we have an interactive showing the three main types of faults that students can explore. The San Andreas Fault is a strike-slip fault. And here we have an animation showing the rapid release of stored energy that causes an earthquake. Let's go back to the main lesson screen. In the last learning activity, we saw that most earthquakes occur along plate tectonic boundaries, but not all. And here's an example. If we click on the Mount St. Ellen's link, we can see that earthquakes also occurred prior to Mount St. Ellen's erupting on May 18th, 1980. And we can actually pan the globe and see these earthquakes plotted at depth. And here we can see that volcano eruptions can also cause earthquake activity. Each lesson has two additional sections, a lesson summary and review questions. Let's take a look at lesson summary. The lesson summary provides a quick summary of the main ideas to help students review what they have learned. It also ties us back to the vocabulary link. Each lesson also has a review component, which is again to reinforce the main concepts and provide students with self-assessment. And again, as in all of our lessons, if you click on the View Answers button, you can see all the answers again, so students can see how they are doing. Now, in addition to lessons, each unit also has opening and closing activities. Let's take a look. Unit Overview and Big Ideas gives a brief overview of the material covered in the lessons. The big ideas are the broad conceptual understandings. We then have the guiding question and key concepts listed for each lesson. Let's go to the next section. What do you already know? This activity makes use of students' prior background knowledge. It's an example of an advanced organizer, in particular, an anticipation guide. It is designed to capture students' interest and to activate prior knowledge. It consists of a series of general background knowledge questions. These questions will again be asked at the end of the unit after students complete all the lessons. Notice the main window changed to provide context to the students. It zoomed in to a volcano in Indonesia, in this case, Mount Tambora. Each unit also has a literacy link. The literacy link is designed to intrigue students and pique their interest. It provides another form of connection for the students to the material outside of the formal curriculum expectations. In this example here, our excerpt is from the Jules Verne novel, A Journey to the Center of the Earth. The excerpt describes how an intrepid band of explorers escape from their adventures deep inside the earth by riding a raft up a volcano during an eruption. Of course, this is completely unrealistic, but it's certainly made for a good novel. You can see in the main window the location of the volcano in Iceland that the explorers used to descend into the earth. If we scroll down, we have another link that shows the location of the Stramboli 
volcano in Italy. And it was from this volcano that the explorers exited. At the bottom of the page, we have a series of questions for comprehension and understanding. And in this case, we also have a math extension activity that asks students to measure the total distance the explorers traveled underground in 98 days and to calculate the average distance per day that the explorers would have had to travel to complete their journey. And again, you can view the answers at the bottom. Now let's take a look at the wrap-up section. What do you know now? Here, we once again ask the questions that we asked before the students did the lessons to see how their knowledge has changed. And we also reference where in the lessons they can find the correct answer to the statements. There is also a unit activity, and the unit activity is designed to be a summative exercise in which students make use of knowledge and skills gained by doing the lessons. In this activity on lava flows, students are asked to calculate the speed and direction of the North American plate by analyzing lava flows from the Yellowstone hotspot. And that was a brief overview of how our lesson plans and units are organized in our curriculum. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions, please visit us at LairdEarth.com.